Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Secrets of the Caribbean. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome Verena from Balambusha State in St. Lucia. How are you? Hi, <laughs> welcome, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. Well, you know what? Absolutely stunning. I have been to the website and I've looked around and I was actually calculating how much it would cost me to move in to one of the cabins that you have on your estate because it is stunning. There is quite a history uh, about this, this estate as well. It used to be a plantation and that history goes back to prior to more than most of my ancestors were ever born. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm um, sure. Well, um, of course, a human habitation started uh, around 500 AD, and that was um, the indigenous uh, Arawak and Carib Indians, as, as they're commonly known. Uh, we've actually found a lot of artifacts on the property, um, pieces of pottery and stone tools. And so there's been people living here for a very, very long time. And um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the, the sort of story of that. And of course, the Europeans and the Africans and the East Indians who came after. Um, but there's really uh, traces of all of these cultures still on the island. And it's, um, you know, what makes it so fascinating and, and, and also challenging at times. Um, but I think we're all um, coming to terms with our history. And I, I feel like the Caribbean's done a pretty good job at that, actually. And, um, well, Ballenbush is, is one of those places that has really um, sort of seen it all from, uh, like I said, from the indigenous uh, people through all the uh, wars and slavery and colonialism and independence and, um, and up to the present day. So, um, so there's a lot of history here and there's a lot of uh, really beautiful things and really um, horrible things that happened here over, over the decades. But I mean, it's all part of embracing the history because <clears throat> if we don't remember the horrible things, we are bound to repeat them. So it is nice to make sure that that is kept as part of the history in order to carry on forward and make sure that it, it doesn't happen again. What do you have now? What is your estate like at present time? Um, well, I mean, it's, I guess the best way to describe it would be like a, an eco an eco escape. <laughs> it's um, it's it's eighty acres. It's uh, really a, a fairly large uh, property still, and it's um, it's a very special place in the sense that it's a place that's really immersed in nature. Um, that has uh, just uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> it's it's hard to describe. But um, we we are a we are a small eco place and. Um, the, of course, the focus now is on tourism, um, but really people come here to heal and to reconnect and to get away and to sort of go back to like a simpler time as well and, um, and less, uh, less of all the um, modern influences, less, less uh, stress. Um, it's, it's really a place to sort of regroup and ground yourself. Um, and a lot of people feel like it's a very spiritual place place. Uh, we, we really also um, are very focused on wellness and, uh, you know, body, mind, spirit, all of that. Um, but it's a very sort of thing that it's very organic. It happened in a very organic way. So it was not really something that we consciously set out to do. It's just that the, the place just provides that sort of setting. And there you know, you, you've got access to the beach, you have, there's not a lot of accommodation on the acreage. Um, it, it is rather sort of a small, well-kept. Do they have access to food? Do, do, do they eat on site as well? Yes, um, so uh, of course um, things are, are always um, evolving, but uh, we we do cook for our guests. So we, we have uh, six um, cottages that we we rent out um, and they're all very unique. They're all very different. A lot of them are uh, somewhat historic. Uh, the, the buildings that were already here that we've added on to, um, they now all have kitchens, which is something that we, we did just uh, this last year. And partially because of the pandemic, we wanted to make sure that everybody could um, be self-sufficient. 
Um, but we also typically prepare meals for our guests. So we, we have breakfast um, normally served at the, the plantation house, which is a 180 year old building, which is also where we live. So it's really multifunctional. It's a museum, a home, a restaurant, <laughs> a bit of everything. Um, and uh, we, we do dinners and so uh, now we're doing grocery deliveries, meal deliveries. So it's really a combination of things. Well, you have sort of started growing crops there as well, because somewhere on your site, it was saying that you're pesticide free. Pesticide free. Um, tell us what you grow on the plantation. Okay, well, um, currently we have uh, a lot of tree crops, of course, which we've, we've always had. Uh, coconuts, papayas, breadfruit, star fruit. Um, we have things also medicinal, like the noni fruit and the moringa. And there's a lot of wild um, plants actually that you can forage for. And so that's another thing that, that we're also getting into. Um, you know, of course, last year thinking about, okay, how are we going to survive if everything really shuts down? And we could survive. It's, um, there's, there's really a lot here that, um, that's just abundant in nature. But uh, we don't ourselves do a lot of um, sort of commercial farming at the moment. Um, we've had various sharecroppers, so we, we still do that where we allow people to plant gardens and have their cattle here, and so we, we have these arrangements, and they're, they're typically without money, so we just do a little trade. Um, of course, in the past, this was a working plantation, and there were, the main crops were first sugarcane, cotton, um, citrus, um, coconuts, also livestock. And uh, we harvested coconuts up until 91. And then after that sort of changed to other crops and then, and then slowly transitioned to tourism. We'd love to bring back the, um, the farming kind of more intensively, but it does require a bit more resources and, um, and human resources as well as capital, um, more than what we have currently. So we're, we're kind of working back towards introducing farming in a, of course, sustainable way, but in a smart way as well. So that takes a bit of uh, planning. Well, it almost seems like you're creating a utopia there where you could literally move in and, and not need the outside world in the slightest. In some ways, yes. I mean, <clears throat> of course, we, we're dependent on tourism right now. So, so in some ways, yes, and in some ways, not at all, because we, we do really depend on, um, on the um, people coming here to support us. Um, but, uh, but we could, we could transition to um, a self-sufficient community that, that would be possible. And we've thought about it. Um, I think what would be nice is kind of a, a mix of things. Um, so, you know, obviously we're, we're also rethinking this concept of, of travel and mass tourism. And right now we really, we really like the fact that people are coming to St. Lucia to stay more long-term. And we think that this could be a great model for the future where we have, you know, maybe a, a few people still, you know, many people still doing the short term travel, but more and more people coming here to spend the whole winter or even a year or two um, to work remotely. And it's possible now. And so that's one of the, the good things about this uh, pandemic is that it has opened up some new possibilities for people. Um, and it's been really nice to, yeah, to, to meet the people that are currently traveling and, and doing that. So aside from the farming that you're looking into uh, in the future, what else do you see going on for the future of Ballin Bush Estate? Um, well, I mean, we, we don't want to become much bigger. So we, we really, um, it's, it's important for us to stay small and unique and bespoke and, and personal because it is a family business. Um, and we really want to be able to provide that sort of intimate setting and be personally involved, get to meet all of our guests. And uh, we want it to be also manageable so that we don't have to become too commercial. Um, but we would love to, of course, um, add the farming, more farming, more organic farming. We would love to do um, the alternative energy, solar energy, um, if that becomes feasible in the next few years, which I think it will. Um, we would probably like to do one or two more buildings. Um, there's one project in particular that we've, we've been 
sort of dreaming about for a long time, which is to um, convert one of the old ruins into a kind of a museum, gallery, and cafe. Because we have all these artifacts and there is all this history and, and also art, and we would love to be able to kind of showcase that more. But that's a difficult project because it doesn't really make money. <laughs> So we have to think about, you know, how and, and when uh, would we be able to do that. But I think it would really enhance the overall, um, uh, you know, value of the place um, as a as a heritage um, place. Well, tell me about the well-being. I mean, uh, you showed me a little bit of one of the the uh, interiors of one of the cabins, as it were, uh, earlier. And I noticed you have like a massage bed almost set up. Now, when it comes to wellness, what services do you offer there? Well, one of the things, of course, is yoga. So that's always very um, popular yoga, meditation, all kinds of different uh, types of, of healing therapies as well. Um, you know, we can do Reiki. So we have a, a, a network of people on the island and also people come um, from overseas. So in the past, we've, uh, we've had quite a few retreats and that's something we'd like to, to expand on some more. Um, so not only nutrition, wellness, yoga, meditation, but, but also things like artist retreats or um, spiritual retreats. Um, it could be um, weight loss, survival training, um, building. Um, we've had uh, students here. We've had archaeology students. We were planning a, um, another re uh, project with some geology students. Um, so anything that's uh, educational, cultural, and, and wellness, really, anything that really has to do with personal growth, um, we'd love to do more of. Well, and let me ask you, when your guests are there, the, uh, you have 80 acres, is it accessible? Is all 80 acres accessible to your guests? Um, not exactly, because a lot of it is wild, and, and we like it that way. I mean, you know, there's, um, there's so, so in terms of the, um, the space, there's a one... The, the northern boundary is the main road, um, so it's very easy access to buses and, and the, the rest of the island. There's sort of one main road that goes all around the island. Um, and we're right between the International Airport and Souffre. And Souffre is where the famous Pitons are, which is a World Heritage Site, and where a lot of the attractions are. And that's about a half hour drive. And then the International Airport is a 20 minute drive. And we're right in the middle, so I, I have to say that I feel like we're in the best spot on, on the island because the south part is the, the most authentic and most uh, sort of beautiful part. Um, but um, there's also then on the, the um, western boundary, there's, there's basically a, a large pasture where we, we have some cows and horses. Um, and, but a lot of that is not so accessible, really. Um, because it's all kind of forested and grown up as well. And then on the um, eastern boundary, there is a river, which is the Ballenbush River. And, uh, and then, of course, there's the coastline. And on the coastline, there are four beaches that adjoin the property. And two of them are very you know, easy to access where you can swim as well. So we have our own more or less private black sand beach. And it's, it's a very wild, natural, beautiful beach where you can be completely on your own. Um, and so right now, especially people really, and like really, really appreciate that. And because it, St. Lucia has a two week quarantine. Um, yeah. And so when you arrive right now, um, international travelers have to remain on property for most of the time. They can take certified tours, um, but they're really encouraged to kind of stay on wherever they are but here they're they don't feel confined at all because they can roam around they can walk up the river they can go to the beach they can be in the garden we've got cats and dogs and other people um to interact with and so of course all of it's safely abiding by the protocols but it is really its own little world so um we're just so so grateful to be here right now and, and not in a city somewhere <laughs> Well, I can imagine I've been talking to a lot of people that have been in quarantine, a lot of crew around the world, actually, that have been in quarantine um, in places like Australia. And now England, of course, has quarantine. But we're talking like travel lodge. You know, you're stuck literally in a hotel room with food being dropped off at the door. Um, and that's it. So the idea of being in quarantine in a place like yours, that, that's heaven. I, I think people even out of quarantine times living, you know, on a site like yours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It sounds like heaven. 
Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are, are really enjoying it. Um, of course, two weeks can't be a long time. So sometimes there's, you know, people do feel a little bit restless and, and they want to see the island more. So we've also been really encouraging people to stay more than two weeks because if you can, if you can do three weeks at least, then you have that last week to go around, rent a car, and, and see the island. And at that point, you've really kind of, you you've you've settled in, and you've, um, I don't know, you're in a different space after two weeks of being in a place like Balamush. You you're really your mind's in a different place, and I think that. Uh, it's almost like a retreat. Well, and I have to say, I mean, I was taking a look at the prizes on your website and, you know, it's probably below what a lot of people would pay for just a regular hotel room in any city across the face of the planet. Um, so it, it really is a dream. It's, it's, absolutely, it's a very well hidden dream, but, um, you know, once people discover it, I am sure that you're going to see that there's a, a lot of people that are wanting to book in. I think so. No, it's 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 really. Um, we don't do a lot of marketing, and that it's a lot of it is word of mouth and friends of friends and repeat guests, and and we like that. Um, I know I need to do more marketing because the occupancy is actually low um, because it's so seasonal, and um, the the place. I mean, it's actually nice to travel almost all year round. There are only two or three months that are not ideal. But it's just that people want to get away in the winter. That's understandable. Um, and I have to say that, you know, this is not a place for everyone. It is a rustic place. Um, it's the, the, the accommodations are simple. They're, they're open to the outdoors. There are no screens. There's no air conditioning. There's no swimming pool. There's no bar, <laughs> no nightlife. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, um, you know, so so we, we live with nature. We live with, with all the, the, the bugs and, um, all the little quirky things and you know that you encounter um, when you get to know the real the real Caribbean and um, we're at the point where we're like you know what if, if that's not for you then that's fine <laughs> but if it is you'll love it <laughs> but it has internet right yes we do have wi-fi now in all of the cottages um, and uh, yeah we're constantly um, improving and, and making things more comfortable and um, which it's, it's a, it's a place that's old and so it re requires a lot of maintenance. It's, it's large, the garden and the, all the buildings. And so we, we know most of it's basically like a nonprofit. <laughs> we just try to keep it going, um, as best as we can, but, um, it, it is amazing and it has, it has a lot of potential to, um, like you said, to appeal to even more people and then to, to attract those people who really appreciate this kind of thing. Well, you know what? I, for one, am going to count the days until I can come and visit. And I thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you so much. Um, this was a real pleasure to be able to share um, my home and my, my passion. <laughs> thank well, you. It is very beautiful. Once again, this has been Verena from the Ballenbush Estate in St. Lucia. Um, stunning place. I would highly recommend checking it out and letting me know how it goes. <laughs> I'll get there one day. You've been watching another edition of Inside Secrets of the Caribbean. My name is Ria. I've been your host. Please tune in again next week. Bye.